Hey there! Today we're going to be having a look at this pen. It's a Visconti Homo sapiens and uh, this very kindly was sent to me by a viewer who said I, I just, it's just not my thing. Would you like to have it? I said well that's very kind of you. And here we are. So I thought at the very least uh, I, I should do a review. I have reviewed the Homo sapiens model. There are a lot of different Homo sapiens. There is of course the one made of actual lava. Uh, which is like this. Well, I'll talk about that in just a second, but there is also a whole bunch of different finishes. I had one years ago. I ended up selling that one, and this is one of those where I kind of regretted it because it's such an interesting material. So, I'm very happy to have this one. Uh, I will cover the past of the pen. I'll do a writing sample. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Let's get started. Okay, here we go with the Visconti Homo Sapiens Magma. Uh, so, interesting pen. I'll talk a bit about the pen, but first let me just show you the box. It came in cardboard outer sleeve. Now we have this inner box, um, which came, oh God, came with a letter, sorry. Um, has a little information booklet in it as well. And Visconti does a very nice job on these. They're very... <laughs> colorful and fancy um, and that's it I don't believe there's anything under this no 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 that's glued in place so we're gonna leave that as is and then we have here the pen let me zoom in a bit on that no nope. position it exactly the wrong way there we are never done this before um, the pen so this is made it's an interesting material it's made out of lava from uh, Mount Etna which is about 50-50, um, I think, mixed with resin, if I remember correctly. It has a double reservoir power filler, which means that you can unscrew this, you pull it out, there's a rod in there with a seal, and then you push that rod back in when you have the nib in a bottle of ink, that create, and then it creates a vacuum that then pops, and then it sucks in ink. It's quite nice, nice ink capacity. The nibs come in extra fine, fine, medium and broad, as well as a 1.3 millimeter stub. These are made of 18 karat gold, but they look black, so I'm assuming they have ruthenium uh, plating. And uh, the interesting thing about this material in general, sorry, that's, I, I should have said that straight away, that's not about the nib, but about the pen material. It is extremely heat resistant, which is useful if you work in volcanoes. Um, and it's supposedly unbreakable. It's also hygroscopic, so it absorbs sweat. And someone once asked me, does that mean that the section starts to smell? Very interesting question, and not that I know of. But I'll keep sniffing it and I'll report back. Uh, the MSRP for these was $8.95 US, and I've seen them for a street price of about $716. Uh, they're sold out in a lot of places, though, so it might be difficult to rush out and get one. At night, night next to Pilot Metropolitan, you see it's a bigger pen, uh, fairly girthy, uh, and just generally. Visconti's don't tend to be the, the world's smallest pens. Okay, so past the pen. On top, we have the My Pen system. This is the Visconti logo. You can pop that off, and then you can, it's magnetized. You can put on other things, like your initials, that sort of thing. I haven't actually tried to pop this off, but most of them are that system. Uh, then we have... The clip, I kind of like this red. I think it goes well with the magma lava theme. We have the Visconti logo engraved there that used to be enamel, and now they just laser engrave it. Um, the advantage of that is that the enamel doesn't fall out after a while, so I, I don't necessarily mind that. We have these two rings there. Now we have a center band with the Visconti logo, and it says Homo sapiens on the back. The barrel tapers down a bit and then ends in that turning knob, which I can't really show you how it works because it's full of ink and that would expel a lot of ink and it would go everywhere. But I have other videos where I do show you that, including one on how to fill these completely to the brim. Um, if you really want a demonstration of the filling system, it's out there somewhere. The cap uses that interesting bayonet closing system that Visconti uses. The advantage of that um, is that you kind of always have the clip align in approximately the same way. So you can fiddle around with it a little bit, but this is particularly nice if they align it properly. If you have a square, they do square pens, and then the, the cap and barrel should, should um, align. 
clip is spring loaded, by the way, so very pleasant to use. Visconti claims this uh, mechanism is unbreakable, so we can put that to the test one day. Um, another red ring near the end of the filling knob there, and it looks to me like there was a tiny bit of misalignment. I don't know if you can see that, but it looks like this part sticks out a little bit farther than the barrel. I don't care, but some people would. Section, kind of lightly hourglass shaped with another red ring there. And then we have this, in my mind, nice black uh, number six nib. I've always liked that Visconti engraving. I don't know how well you can see, but I'll make sure there are high res pictures on the website. Has a the Visconti in it, has some nice scroll work and it says 18K750, that's the gold content and S for stub. And then we have this feed. And I will say, I've always really liked the shape of Visconti feeds. This curvature, I think, is really sleek and looks really good. I really like that. Okay, larger pen, as I said. But for the ones who love it, it can be posted. It's pretty secure posting, too. And you have a really big pen on your hands, though. So I prefer to use this unposted personally. But, you know, that's just me. Let's see what we can accomplish writing with this pen. I should point out um, that this nib was tuned by Mark Bacchus Spapiens. What the hell? Sapiens. So it is a Nibmeister nib. Um, so just so you know. And K, no, millimeter, sorry. Talking and writing at the same time, doing different things is not easy. Uh, the ink is Moonstone by um, um, Edelstein. And I think, I, I kind of like it because it's, it's a gray ink and I thought that would go well with the, uh, the body of this pen. The nib on this pen is just very nice, very pleasant to use, very smooth and gives a very nice line variation that we'll, I'll show you in just a second. I thought it's very nice. I think there was a skip there, but beyond that, pretty good. Um, wetness. Viscontis are known to be wetter writers, and this one is no exception, but again, the nib has been sent to a nibmeister, so I don't know if it was that wet at the start. You're just going to have to forgive me because, I mean, I, someone sent me this pen, right? I, I don't know what it was like before. The stub offers a nice natural line variation, as you can see here. This is under no pressure, so you get the nice thin um, side stroke and the wider down stroke. As to flex, uh, it's not a it's not advertised as a flex nib. You can squeeze out a little bit. I'm very careful though. It's an 18 karat nib. It'll have a little bit of bounce as they often do, but I mean, it's not, it's not meant as a flex nib. Um, reverse writing, typically not very successful with stubs. They don't really have round tipping and it, that squeak is something. So no, it's just a no. I think what we should do is see what I like and what I don't like about this pen. Let's do that. What do I like, what do I not like about this Homo sapiens? Well, I mean, first of all, it was sent to me, which is incredibly kind, and that should, I, I cannot stress that enough. As to the actual pen, I think there are some things going for it that are really quite nice. Um, first of all, I think the material is interesting. Let's, let's face it, a lot of pens are either plastic, celluloid, metal, but that's kind of it, right? acrylic but plastic and acrylic etc so it's really plastic metal celluloid and even cell anyway it doesn't matter don't see an awful lot of pens made of lava do you no so that is interesting and this this the, the whole stuff with the, the hygroscopic properties of the lava and that it's supposedly unbreakable all these kinds of things i think just add to the interesting aspects of the pen and i really do like that i it, it's it's just it makes everything a bit more special. I think that's quite nice. Um, I also like the ink capacity. The ink capacity is good. Uh, I've had no issues with it. Uh, it that is, um, it's just a, a fun, that the double reservoir power filler is a fun filling system. And I will say it is a very nice writer. But of course the issue here is we know 
if you watch anyone's videos or read reviews online, Visconti nibs can be a little hit or miss when it comes to quality control. And I found that especially with the palladium nibs, that has been an issue. I have used my share of Viscontis over the years, and I will absolutely say it was mainly the palladium nibs in my mind that were an issue. With the steel nibs, I don't recall issues that I experienced personally. With the gold nibs, I don't remember a lot of issues. I remember, I remember one broad gold nib that skipped a bit. Mike Masayama fixed that. Uh, that's one of the few Viscontis I still own, by the way. This is <clears throat> another gold nib, Visconti having moved away from palladium back to gold. I think that was a wise choice given some of the issues with palladium nibs. The complicating factor there was that when those palladium nibs wrote well, they were incredibly pleasant nibs to use and fiddle around with. So, I mean, they were really, really fun to write with. But if they didn't write well, that was an issue. So I think that move back to gold is good. Now, this is a very pleasant writer, but this is a nib that has been tuned by Mark Bacchus, who's a nibmeister of known quality. So it's a little difficult for me to judge how this wrote out of the box, because I've never used it out of the box. I've only used this tuned nib. What I will say is, this is a great testament to Mark Bacchus's abilities, because it's a fantastic writer. So let's, let's, if, but we'll have to settle on that, right? Things I don't like so much. Well, at $700, uh, the MSRP was $8.95. I've seen street prices of about $7.16. $716 is an awful lot of money uh, for a pen, and they are expensive. It's, it's just the way it is. Whether that's worth it for you, well, that's something you have to decide. I will say you get an interesting material. You get an interesting filling system. You do get a gold nib, um, which may even write. <laughs> um, and that I think is worth something. Not just not the writing part, that's a joke, but the material is interesting. I don't know if anyone, I could be wrong, but I don't know if anyone making pens out of that material. The filling system, the double reservoir power filler is a cool filling system. So I mean, all these kinds of things I think are quite neat, but it is expensive. Let's be fair, it's not a cheap pen. Uh, in a more objective sense, because price, I mean, for some, some people, $700 is pocket change, right? Uh, not for me. <laughs> Well, for some people it is. My biggest issue with it is there's no ink window. And there is absolutely no way of knowing how much ink you have left. And I have multiple times run out of ink because I had no idea what was left. And that is a problem. And then yes, you can do certain things like you can very gently operate. It's just no ink in it right now. Uh, you can very gently operate. You can see what I was doing, sorry. Uh, very gently operate the mechanism and then some, some ink is gonna collect in the feed. But but that can make it overflow, you'll have ink everywhere. That's, that's not convenient at all. So I know that they created a lava version of the Homo sapiens with an ink window, and I think that's worth it because it's crapshoot. But there we are. Having said all this, I am immensely grateful for the very, very kind person who sent me this. It's, a, it's not just like sending someone a $15 pen, it's an expensive pen. So I really appreciate that, I'm very grateful. I love it. It's a very pleasant writer. 1.3 millimeter stub is a nib I love. So I'm very happy with it. And I'm, I'm just honored and touched that, that, that people would be willing to send me something like this. Because at the end of the day, I'm just a guy doing some weird videos. So I really appreciate that. And I, I value that a lot. Okay. I hope this was useful. And I'd gladly see you later. If you want to send me anything, <laughs> I'm just joking. Bye.